It's our great pleasure to talk to you, uh, Gerhard, today. Can you introduce yourself and speak about your business? What do you do? I'm a paramedic. I've got my own ambulance service for the last 25 years. Uh, I mostly go to remote places, um, getting, uh, getting people that are in war situations, get them out, evacuate them. People that hurt and uh, people in Africa that work at mines to bring to South Africa for treatment. Yeah, okay, very interesting. Let's ask the first question, okay? Yeah. Okay? Yes? Yeah. What, what is a paramedic? Uh, it's a person that uh, advanced life support paramedic is a person that is working on ambulances normally if you see them. I'm also a combat med medic if I go in uh, to go fetch patients in a war situation you are basically a soldier. Uh, medic. That is your work but you have to protect yourself and your crew. Paramedic work mostly with sick and injured people uh, if we work in civilian street, we pick up accidents and so forth. Okay. So you, you said that you are like a soldier paramedic. What, what does this mean? Like you train like a soldier? I was trained like a soldier way back. But uh, that is why they used that. Before 1994, I was trained. And what we do is if there's a place where uh doctors without borders is working and it's very dangerous we assist them just to get the people out the the injured people to get them out of, of that situation okay. not to fight as a soldier at all but to protect yourself and your crew and your patient yeah so it's not really a uh, military but kind of yeah, very brave. Yeah, it's, we were born to do some things and that I was born to do that. Yeah, okay. Okay, the second question, what are the duties of a paramedic? Firstly, uh, to secure your patient. If it's, I'm talking now civilian street, you go to a um, accident or a house call where there's a heart attack. You do your best you can, you stabilize the patient, and then you transport them to the hospital where the doctors will take care of him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Either way. Same in the bush, you take them out, you give them to the doctors, they work on it. We only stabilize them, see that they are hopefully alive when we get to the medical facility where they are treated then accordingly okay who are the employers of paramedics um, the state has uh, ambulance services all ambulance services uh, the the fire brigades and then of course private tiers like myself i've got my own ambulance which i use in state side where we go out and save people, if you can put it that way. Who pays for you if you use your own ambulance? <coughs> the medical aid, most people have medical aid, and the medical aids pay for us. Okay. According to our standing, yes. Great. Uh, what are the required qualifications and, tra and the training for a uh, paramedic? There are certain levels. I'm advanced paramedic, then there's an intermediate level, and then there's a basic level. That is short courses, or you do a uh, BTEC at the university, it's a four year course. From there on, you can do your masters and your uh, uh, PhD. Uh, I was trained in the Defence Force, uh, but it, uh, 
the same. You you go through the levels. That take, uh, takes you about work as a basic ambulance technician for about a year. And then you work as an intermediate for about um, two or three years. And then you become a advanced. Yeah, it's quite a journey. It is, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a fun journey, but that's a journey. Yeah. Okay. What are the key uh, the key skills for a paramedic? Pardon? What What are the key skills for a paramedic? Uh, to stay cool and not to be afraid of blood and gore and so forth, but mostly to keep your cool and keep the uh, uh, family of the the patient to keep them relaxed and cool and even keep your patient cool and reassure the patient the whole time that what, what is going to happen, be honest with him and um, that's it. Okay. Glasses. Great. That's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. No, no. That, uh, that is uh, in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay, so let's explore the emergency medical services levels. Okay? Yes. Okay. So, uh, number one, what does a fire responder, a first responder, do? First responder is, if we're talking medical, that you go to the scene, they let you know there's an accident on that street and we go out and we secure the parameters so that guys don't drive into you. You see that your basic thing is to keep yourself safe. Do everything, look around, see that you are safe, that you are not in danger. Um, <clears throat> then you start doing whatever is necessary. If it's a house call, if it's a heart attack, that's a different set of rules. If it's a, a, a car accident, different set of rules. Uh, so that is basically that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what does an emergency medical responder do? He sees to it that his patient is always, uh, that you don't cause more harm than, than you help him. But you do everything for your patient on the basis that you first look after yourself and your crew, their safety. For instance, if there's a car underneath a oil tanker that is burning, then unfortunately I won't go in there because of the safety. But if there is a chance you go in and you do everything humanly possible for that patient to get him out in the ambulance and you do whatever is necessary steps, to get him to a hospital in a decent condition. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what does emergency medical technicians do? Um, do? Uh, they paramedics. They depend on what level you are. They, for instance, they um, catch babies. They work in all different circumstances, car accidents, uh, heart attacks at homes, stabbings, shootings. Um, you are the first guy that the people call, the police call control. Control calls you. They need the paramedic there. Somebody's a diving accident. Um, we also do diving. Uh, we got trained divers should there be a diving accident. So we can recover the person, hopefully alive, otherwise we just take him out. Yeah. Okay. What does an intermediate care paramedic or emergency uh, medical technician, A, do? 
that is basically all of them do the same work. It's only the protocols, what kind of medicine. Uh, for instance, if a person is hurt, an intermediate paramedic cannot give him morphine for the pain, whereas uh, advanced life support can. But the work is, basically, is the same. You work as a team. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just small differences in the protocols, what you are allowed to do. Intubation, uh, intermediate paramedic cannot do an intubation. Uh, but advanced life support can do intubation. They have other resources that they can use. Same as a basic technician. Mm -hmm. They have certain things that they can do, and but that's a whole protocol that you have. But the, the main, the core, normally what happens is an intermediate and a basic life support paramedic goes out. If there is need for an advanced life support paramedic, which does not happen a lot, um, they do the job and they take the person to the hospital. Yeah. If they need to be strong medication or intubation and so forth, they call and say, we need um, advanced life support. Good. Okay, and that the advanced life support is you? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So what does an advanced care paramedic do? It's basically, all the paramedics do basically exactly the same. Like I said, the protocols is different. But advanced life support paramedic is more, like I said, the medications that you can give are scheduled medications uh, you can do intubations and you basically in control of that scene if there is no need to go out as the ALS advanced life support they don't call you then they do the whole accident by themselves yeah. so it's it's basically only in the protocols what what you can do and it's not very much different from each other. The main thing is saving the person's life to the best of your ability. Yeah, very nice. Okay, what unusual hazards does being a paramedic present? Driving at very high speeds. Idiots on the road that actually drive in front of you when you respond to a uh, people driving into accident scenes, mostly under the, the influence, but sometimes people just drive into, and then working in, if there's a car that is submerged in water, where we have to get him out, uh, you don't know what is, with floods especially, you don't know what is underwater, it's like diving. You don't know if there's trees, thumps, or whatever coming your way, or so that's basically that. And then coming back, um, remember we skip robots and the other people do not stop. That is the main hazard for a paramedic or any paramedic, any ambulance personnel. That is the main hazard for that. And then getting corona. Everybody is talking about corona, but other illnesses with a needle prick, you can get HIV, hep C all those illnesses. But that is on yourself, basically, because you have to use your PPEs and you have to look after your own health first. So that is, the, the accidents, I would say, is, is the biggest problem for any medical personnel, uh, uh, pre-medical, pre-hospital medical personnel. Very nice. Okay, if someone told you that they want to be a nurse, or sorry, want to be a, a paramedic, what are your recommendations yes. and advice for them? Work on a, a drive along with an ambulance service. Go and ask them, they do allow it. 
work one or two nights on a ride along, see if you if it gives you the kick. Because that's an adrenaline rush from when you leave till you get there. Some people are just not in it. They can't handle a big accident scene where there's four or five cars. They are good in practical because that's a plastic environment. You do all your training on dummies and so forth. That's why I say the best thing is go on ride a lot uh, and see if you can handle them. See if you can handle the blood, the gore there. That's crazy. It goes crazy on the accident scene. These traffic officers, these police, these it's light. Some people just can't handle that and the blood. So best thing is first thing, go on a ride along, one or two. And see if you are go to the fire station. Do uh first a course and help out at the fire station or go to a hospital if you have a first aid course tell them you want to volunteer so that you see not what you see on movies but the real thing to see if you can stomach it and then you are born to be a paramedic or a nurse or a doctor for that matter you are born to be that you don't do that if you want to get rich, because I will never be rich, if <laughs> you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you have to be born to be that. And to find out if you are born to be that, you have to go on a ride along. That is my advice. That is what I would have done. Yeah, very nice. Okay, uh, what, what do you advise the people who have someone who is injured? What should they do? Phone uh, America's 911. We've got another number, 1011. Phone your nearest ambulance service and ask them for the advice. But people must do themselves a favor and do a first aid course so that if a person is choking or having a heart attack, that they can start so long with a CPR. Um, if they hurt, that is why you have to do a first aid course. This is a short course, two day course. You know where to uh, uh, put the pressure on if they're bleeding, what to do when there's a burn. But phone your ambulance if it's a very big emergency. Phone them. Tell them to come out and you can do what you can do at present. Very nice. Uh, that is why I say first aid course, everybody should take one. Yeah, okay. So, um, what, what did you learn as a person from being a paramedic? Pardon? What did you learn? What did you learn as a person from being a paramedic? You actually become cold um, towards certain things. You yeah, about the convert. It's not. COVID, it's not so close to you because you work with death every day. It's not, you just grow up um, mentally and physically as well because it's a physical work. I did my training in the army, so it was a different scenario. Uh, you just learn to cope with life on a where other people get um, rattled. You stay calm. You just, some people, if they are not born for that, if they do it for a long time, they crack. They, they can't handle it anymore. But as I said, you grow and you, you become a stronger person, much stronger person, and you can assess any situation very quickly. Uh, if you get to where a bomb exploded, for instance, or where they, there's a shooting, you can very easily sum up the situation. Or if you get to an accident, you, you learn how to control yourself. Young upcoming paramedics, if they see an accident, they want to run to the accident scene and do what they, without looking first at themselves. Their safety. So it gives you 
a calm effect if you are at a sea. That's basically you grow as a person mentally and phys physically. And you have to be strong to do it, um, to start with. Yeah. And you have to like people. I don't like people very much, but I learn to like people. <laughs> okay. so that's yeah, great. So it has been a great pleasure talking to you today. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Okay. And sorry for about the, the delay earlier.